Welcome back to the Math Experience Excel class. And so in our last class, we looked at formatting cells. We're able to change font size, change the font, use bold, italics, underline, add a border, change the font color, change the fill color change the alignment both horizontally and vertically so in this class we'll be looking at formatting numbers and dates so let's continue from where we stopped formatting numbers and dates now excel works with a lot of data and a major chunk of those data is going to be numbers numbers of different kinds numbers of different types um, numbers could come in different forms and then excel has a group of function just we need to tell me what to do option here it has a group of function assigned to just formatting numbers now if we go down we can see we have the general format which basically includes no specific format we have numbers currency accounting short and long dates time format percentage fraction scientific or should it be identified as just plain text now we still have more options you know more number formats where we can design our data to be more specific to us much more specific to our regions, to our countries, to our race and tribe. So let's just get some example. Let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Now, as we type, we discover that Excel identifies it as a number. And because it identifies it as a number, it's Add decimal you can see point zero zero behind the number that's because it identifies it as a number what if we change our format see excel now just take this as a general data datum without any format you see so it removes the decimal place now we've seen what it does with numbers now with currency we can see it adds a currency right in front of the numbers so if we do that we'd see it adds pounds to the front of the figures so after adding pounds it's also added commas so we can easily call out the figures in terms of their jurisdictions so we have here we have 1 billion 234 million 567,890 pounds. All right. Um, if we change this to accounting, it moves the pound symbol to the far left. So what it does here. So you see, it moves the pound symbol away from the, the figures. If you stretch your column a little you would see a better effect of that and that's the difference numbers has no symbol currency puts the symbol of the, the, the put the symbol but it merges the symbol with the figures accounting shifts the symbol far left from the figures um, short date is going to show me ah she's not accepted and i will tell us why because the numbers are not in any date format date has a special kind of formatting so we would just undo that i'll give us another option when it gets to dates both long and short dates um so percentage percentage adds two zeros to the back because it is assumed we are multiplying our initial figure by 100 to get percentage so 
if we undo that, the two zeros leave. Okay. Then the next format is fraction. Because these are all whole numbers. So um, there is no fraction format for that. And we have scientific. This converts our numbers to primary digits times 10 raised to the power of decimal places available. So if we do that, we'll have 1.23 times 10 raised to the power of 9. Because that is the scientific format. We also have the text format now. Text format interprets the figures as text. I'll show so I'll also show the difference. Now let's just do text format and see what it shows us. It's going to move everything to the left. Because Excel auto aligns alphabet or text <clears throat> to the left and auto aligns numbers to the right. So if we have maths. It aligns maths to the left. If you have one, two, three, it aligns one, two, three to the right. So Excel sends text to the left, numbers to the right. But if we want to identify a number as a text, Excel sends it over to the left. Now let me give us examples of the date format. Now date always have a delimiter or a splitter. It could be dashes, you could have dashes, you could have slashes, or we could just mix numbers and text. In the case we we'll say the days in numbers, the months in text, and then the year in numbers. So the first option is using dashes. So let's use dash for a date. As we want to write 1st of January 2022, let's say 01, 01, 2022. So you see what happens? It converts it to that um, slashes. And then it automatically identifies it as a date. You can also say 01. In this case, we want to mix it with text. January 2022. So you see what happens? It automatically identifies it as dates. But if we are to use just plain figures as this, Excel will be unable to identify this as a date. So, like I said, Excel can be customized to individual regions or locations. Mostly we are working with currencies and their symbols. So the default for mine is pounds. But Let's assume I'm in the United States. I could come to my currency format and change to the United States dollars. I could also change to whatever country I live in. I could say, okay, assuming I live in Canada and they use card, see, that's a Canadian dollar. Click on here yeah, and I search on card, C-A-D. Okay, and then it converts my pounds or my dollars to card. So depending on wherever you are, you can, Excel has so many options. I think Excel captures all the countries in the world. So you'd be able to customize your currencies according to your country according to your country's currency so if you live in senegal you could see the sefa if you live in czech republic you could see croatia 
Sweden. So you just basically need to search on your country's currency and then Excel would give you exactly what you are looking for. So it helps you keep database that are indigenous. You don't have to keep it in foreign currencies. You can keep it in indigenous currencies. Maybe you're in Japan and you need to keep your, your data in yen. Excel has got your back. So these are the ways you can format your numbers. Let me just take this back to no format. Then let me explain how you can use the commas. By adding comma to be easy to pronounce the figures because it splits them in hundreds, thousands, millions, and billions. Trillions, if you need to have figures that stretch up to that extent. Now, let's look at these last two if we have to work with decimal places. So let's add some decimals over here. Let's add 0.78232. Now, Excel converts it to two decimal places because it's accounting and basically your shillings, your cobos, your cents are in two decimal places after which they get converted to the main currency. But if you're working with no specifics, and we say we want to put a decimal place, this will help us decrease the decimal places, while this help us increase the decimal places. If I say I want just one decimal place, see, it gives us just 0.9. I say I want two decimal places, it gives me 0.87. I want three decimal places, it gives me 0.873. It rounds up or runs down depending on whatever it value it, it has last. So with this, you are able to put all your data in the accurate formats, whether currencies, whether numbers, whether dates, Excel has got your back. If you love this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And then we'll see you in the next class. Thank you.